folks and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. I've got a new product here uh, that I'm excited to review. I've been wanting to have one of these and review them for a long time now. Finally got one. And uh, this is a uh, power station that is made by Generark. That's G-E-N-E-R-A-R-K. Uh, it is the home power one unit. It is a, a thousand watt uh, inverter with a 2000 watt surge. Uh, it has DC ports for um, USB, USB-C, uh, 12 volt uh, lighter plug, and three AC 110 volt outlets on it. Uh, it has a very good sized battery, 1002 watt hour battery. And uh, these are designed uh, for people that want a unit that can replace a generator like a gas generator uh, that wants a uh, emergency backup system in, in the event of a uh, power outage at their homes or to be used for camping, uh, recreation, and I'm even going to be using it for uh, running some power tools to show you how this can replace a gas generator because that's the main purpose that I want one for. I'm trying to get off of using my gas generator as much as possible. Um, I'm off grid. I live with a 400 watt power system, solar power system here at my cabin. have for over 20 years, but occasionally I still have to use my gas generator, especially on days when I've got uh, low solar uh, output. Uh, not a lot of sunshine. I might get three days where my solar panel system gets too low and then I have to kick on the generator. Or if I'm using power tools or I want to run my microwave because those are larger than the inverter and power system that I'm using. So that's why I wanted one of these units. And we're going to test this to see if one of these units will actually replace a uh, gas generator like my 1200 watt uh, Champion generator. Now, it's been an excellent generator. I have nothing bad to say about the Champion generators. I'm just trying to get off gases for as much use as I possibly can. So let's talk about this unit. I unboxed it. I've already been testing on some things. So I wanted to see how well it worked here. Now, let me tell you right off the bat, my first impression is, is this is very solidly built. I like it. It, it's, it has a good feel. It's very solid uh, constructed. It's good heavy duty uh, commercial plastic. Okay, which is what most all of these that I know of are, are pretty much made out of. It has a handle on the top. The handle flips up. Now, that's different than some units. Some units have a solid handle that you can't set out of the way. The handle is always up and sticking up and in the way. This has a handle that you can fold down. I like that. It, the handle also has this grippy uh rubberish material which you're all familiar with it has that grippy material underneath it so you can get a good grip on this and this unit weighs about 23 pounds it has a good substantial lithium battery a 1002 watt hour lithium battery inside so it's it's about 23 pounds i can lift it with one arm but you can tell you got some good solid uh batteries and good solid equipment in there now it has good solid pins. It doesn't feel like this thing's going to fall apart or the handle's going to come off. This thing will, will stay with it uh, for a very long time. It's not going to break loose or anything like that. Uh, it has all the plugs for this. All of the outlets are all in the front. There's nothing on the sides or on the back to plug in. I like that because if you have uh, plugs in the back, you're more likely, if you have this tucked in somewhere, you're more likely to snap off or break off a plug if it's in the back or on the sides or something like that. All of the plugs are in the front so you can find them easily and get to them easily. Now we'll talk about uh, some other features here. Now this is a, like I said, it's about 23 pounds. Uh, it's a good substantial solid unit. The other thing is this has uh, rubberized feet underneath it. It has these rubberized feet, which you can see, pads. And that's good because this thing won't slide around. If you set it on a table or you set it on the floor and it gets bumped or it's in your camper and you're driving up and down twisty roads, you don't have to worry about this thing sliding all over and getting broke. It has good solid uh, feet pad pads underneath it and it feels very stable. It's a very, very solid unit. In the sides, it has these uh, vents. Now, you just need to be aware, these are a vent. They are open so that they can expel the warm air from the inverter. This has an inverter inside. It also has batteries that can build up heat when they're uh, operating. And so the, uh, it has a fan that will expel the heat. You just need to remember not to cover these, uh, these uh, fans, vents that are on both sides. Don't cover them up. Uh, you need because you have to have uh, flow and ventilation to the inverter and to the batteries inside it. And you can see on the back, it's just got some grids some some great plastic on here but there's no plugs or anything on the sides of the back and again the, the handle folds down a good good size unit uh that you can tell is uh is is well made i'd say it's it, it you can definitely sell this is this is well made to, to handle some abuse and, and be uh used for many many years that's they've designed it that way all of the lettering on it is very well made it says generac on top of it okay and it uh 
all of the uh, lettering for all of the different plugs is all in English. Uh, and there, there's no scratches, blams, there's nothing scraped off. And everything is you, so that you can understand it. It's got a DC, it's got a DC uh, switch there with, for the, all the DC plugs. Got your inputs up here, marked with input. It's got your AC down here, again, with its own AC. And here, there you can see the, uh, here the inverter. I'll do it one more time so you can hear. Okay, there you heard the fan kick on. Kicked on for just a second to, to cool out any heat that might be inside the unit, but then it shut down because it's not running any power right now. It's not building up heat inside the unit, so it doesn't need to run the fan. It only runs the fan when the temperature sensor says it's starting to get hot. Otherwise, it doesn't run the fan because the, the fan uses power. So, it also has the digital me meter uh, up here, which is your readout, which tells you your battery level. It does not come completely charged up. It will come at about 29%, somewhere right around there charged up. Uh, you want to fully charge it before you use it. And then it's recommended that you keep these charged uh, before they get completely low. You, you shouldn't really ch discharge them below 75%. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, somewhere between 25 and 75% is the rule. Somewhere between there, you should try to recharge them back up. Uh, you can drain them completely down low and, and recharge them, but the more times you do that, the more cycles you're going to use. Uh, the the uh, battery won't last as long if you're constantly draining them all the way down. So this does have the meter up here. It tells you what the battery level is. It has the bars, the typical bars that you know on the, the, uh, the battery that shows how many bars it has, just like on your phone. And it shows it has two bars right now. And then it also shows the input, uh, which shows what, what voltage it's charging at. And then it has the output uh, to show how many uh, watts it's, it's being used uh, for whatever appliances that you're running for. And we're going to talk about more about these types of plugs here in a minute. Uh, but I'm going to put this to the test of an off-gridder here now. Of course, this will uh, recharge things like your phones, your laptops, your small gadgets, and stuff like that. But I, I want this to, to be able to replace my small gas generator that I use here at my cabin or I take with me camping sometimes. I want to be able to see, if, will this run some power tools? Will this run a vacuum? Will this run my uh, cutoff saw? Will this run a ch an electric chainsaw? Will this run my uh, weed eater? I want to see if it'll run those sorts of things. Will this run a microwave? Will it run my Alpacool C20 fridge? So we're going to put it to some tests here and see exactly what this thing will run. This is the off-gridder review test for this unit. The uh, Again, this is a Generarc um, home power one system. So let me get some things and we'll, we'll uh, charge this up and we'll see, we'll, we'll talk about the different outlets on it and uh, the different ways it can be charged up and then we're going to start plugging in some appliances and see what this thing will, de will actually do. Okay, one of the ways that I want to be able to use this uh, Generarc uh, power uh, base unit is I want to be able to replace my gas generator right there. And what I use my gas generator for most is running power tools and uh, running my microwave. And so I'm going to show that this, this unit here uh, will run those, run any power tools. And that way I could take this along with me, uh, just put it in my truck. If I'm working somewhere in a remote area, take this along and I can do my building. I can do my trimming. I can do all kinds of work using this instead of having to use a gas generator. So this is a uh, Black & Decker string trimmer. You're all familiar with one of these. Look at that. It says this is running about 345 watts. It runs absolutely fantastic on that. And with a long extension cord, I can take that anywhere out, like I have to do along my fences and stuff out there. It's a lot easier to haul this around out there to go do my uh, weed trimming around my big acre yard here than it is to haul a gas generator around. And those little battery units, they don't last very long. This will last for a very long time. So there's that. This is my power saw. And I use this all the time because I'm always building stuff. Also has skill saws and some other saws. This is my Ryobi power saw. Works perfectly off the Generarc. And it says that it, is, it used about 950 watts to run that power saw. And 
And this is my uh, Polson 3.5 horsepower, 13.5 uh, amp, and I think it's a 14 inch uh, chainsaw, electric chainsaw. I use this all the time when I'm trimming trees and stuff like that, so I don't have to use gas. Uh, a lot more convenient, and these these actually have more torque and more power than a gas uh, uh, chainsaw, and you don't have to pull to start them. So here's this. And it says that used about 730 watts, okay? So I can run all my power tools that I run around my cabin here for doing work and also do remote work if I want to. I can put this in my truck, take it anywhere I want to go, power up all my power tools without having to use the gas generator. I don't have to pay for any gas. I can even charge it up in the field with the solar panels that I got. That's a pretty dang good uh, test for an off-grid uh, power generator and this has enough power in it that you could easily do a full day's work uh, with your power tools and uh, probably still have some power left over. Okay so what I've got here is my Frigidaire and I believe this is a 5000 BTU uh, window air conditioner uh, which is a, an Energy Star so it's a very efficient uh, uh, window air conditioner that I have used in the past but it uses uh, more power than my 400 watt system would produce so let's see if it will run off of this Generarc here on AC, put this on high cool, and it's on maximum cool, and it is running. I don't know if you can hear it, but it, it is running just fine, putting out cold air. It'll take a few minutes for it to start putting out cold air. Let's see how many watts it's running. It says it is running 363 watts. Runs fine off of this unit here. And so it, with the solar panels plugged into this, which is what I recommend if you're using this, have the 200, uh, at least 200 watts of solar panels running this, and then you'd only be running about 130 watts off of the uh, batteries, and so you could keep this running for several hours, I would say, one of these small 5,000 BTU window units like this. And uh, right now I'm using an 85 watt uh, swamp cooler or an evaporative cooler made by Hesser, so we would run all day long and probably all night long off of the Generarc uh, using uh, that, that unit instead of this unit here. Okay, and here is my Hess Air evaporative cooler, which I use all the time. It has a very large water tank. Uh, for here in high desert area where we have low humidity, one of these uh, works a lot more efficiently than the window unit that I showed you, and that's why I switched to using one of these. Comes right on, produces a lot of air, cools it right down, and this is using, let's see, it says it is using uh, 58 watts. 58 watts, and that's putting out good a good air right there, okay? Uh, and uh, Hess Air, again, off Amazon, good units. So that works really well. And this is my Dirt Devil vacuum, something that probably doesn't get used near often enough at my cabin. But I do have a vacuum, and it does work. <laughs> Running just straight, and it says it uses uh, about 380. It says it uses that uses about 380 watts. So I can run that. I can run all my power tools. I can run either type of air conditioner that I want to run. I can run a window unit, or I can run my evaporative cooler. I can uh, even clean my cabin, do all my chores, and cook a meal, which I'm going to show you right now. I'll take this in, and I'll run the microwave with it. Okay, so here I have the Generarc uh, Home Power One set up just to, temporarily uh, to show you some of the appliances that this will run. And right now what I've got plugged in uh, through the 12-volt uh, DC plug, or what they call a cigarette plug lighter, is my Alpacool C20 fridge, which I've now had for over two years. I love this fridge. It runs excellent. And uh, it, this runs either off of a 12-volt, 24-volt, or 110-volt. I run it off the 12-volt. It uh, uses less power. Like I told you, you don't have to use the inverter if I'm running off a of 12-volt. And it, it is running perfectly off of this thing. However, the compressor is not running right now because it's already reached temperature. It's already cleared down to, to 20 degrees. So I keep mine set low so that it keeps the stuff on the bottom frozen keeps the stuff on the top fresh and so I have it set quite low it, it will only use power or enough power to register when the compressor kicks on and I've already tested this with the, when the compressor kicks on it re will use between 35 excuse me 35 and uh, 40 uh, watts
so not very much it would run you know it should run at that rate it should run two or three days just off of this general arc unit just like this running just like this now i also use a microwave but because my system is uh, small here at the cabin i usually run the microwave off of my uh, gas generator that i showed you out there i use the gas generator and so i'd like to get off that and be able to use the microwave without using the gas generator and i also have my little uh toaster oven and uh, coffee maker up there on top so we're going to see if it will run all of these appliances uh but this 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 should run this microwave uh this is just a small sunbeam microwave like a lot of people have in their rvs and campers so let's try this here i'm going to cook me some uh snack rolls put those in there we'll heat them up for uh two minutes and we'll see if it runs start it up and it is spinning you can see the lights on inside it is spinning let's see how many watts this uses it says it is using 1175 or 1100 yeah about 1175 maximum watts uh running that little microwave and we'll let's see if it runs for uh well i'll stop it now so you don't have to sit and wait for two minutes but it should run it for two minutes no problem but it will run these little microwaves just fine so now i don't have to use my gas generator out there when i have this recharged i can just use this uh for the uh you know uh, in general at the most i would run this for is maybe 10 minutes uh, most meals i i am just heating up like burritos and pizza and stuff like that those only take about four minutes and so you're not going to use very much battery power at all and like i said if you have this plugged into the solar panels the same time then you're reducing the amount of power that is draining from the batteries it, it would be getting you know upwards of 200 uh, of the watts from the solar panels and the rest would be coming from the battery so it would run a very long time okay so now i'm going to plug in this toaster oven got the toaster oven plugged in and uh, we will just set this i will put the timer on it's on mode just set the timer and it comes on and this has two element two elements in there which should heat up yes and okay you can feel the heat coming out in there there you can see the top ele element come on and then it also has the uh, griddle and oven so it has both okay and that is the griddle and broiler which is up here which gets warm uh, that's running the griddle and broiler and there it is running the uh, toaster We'll see if that element comes on. Now, elements use a lot of power, I'll just tell you now. So there you can see the element getting red. And so the element is coming on and turning on for a toaster oven. It says it's using 250, 253 watts. But it will run, as you can see, it is running that uh, top element there. And according to this, it is using 200 and about 250 or 260 watts to run that top element. And so it will run that, and it runs the griddle. That's also heating up the griddle up here. And I'm sure it will also run the uh, coffee pot. So if I turn this off, and I turn on the coffee pot, yes, it will also run the coffee maker. So I can make coffee out of my coffee maker here. So this unit will take care of my uh, refrigeration needs. It will run the Alpacool C20 fridge over there which i use all the time and that's fairly low watt it'll run that for probably two or three days no problem it will run my microwave and i only run the microwave anywhere from four to ten minutes generally just to heat up foods it will run my little coffee pot coffee maker and uh you know so that's enough there i'm sure it will also run some other uh appliances 12 volt uh you know rv and trucker appliances i'm sure it'll run those no problem if it will run that uh, heater element in that coffee pot there okay so included with the generarc home power one uh, of course, as you get an instruction booklet, and basically it's a fold-out uh, instruction booklet, all in uh, English, uh, and I've looked completely through it, and everything is is understandable. It's it's uh, written well written with lots of pictures. It has pictures of, to show you the different buttons and how they work and everything like that, all the different features and some warnings and cautions inside the instruction manual. Then it also includes uh, this case. Comes and in your case is your recharging uh, cords, and it comes with a uh, transformer, and this is going to be used with your AC plug. This is the AC plug, and you should all be familiar with this type of plug, if it's the right way. It has your uh, typical uh, three-prong US uh, type 
AC plug that'll plug into your wall, and then it, the plug that goes into the unit is a what they call an 8 mm barrel plug, okay? And that will go in here where it says input up here, it's got the plug right there, and this plug plugs into that plug right there, and then you plug it into your wall. And according to the instructions, I haven't recharged this unit yet, but it says it will take about seven hours on AC power to recharge this. Now, it also comes with a DC plug. Now this is nice because not all units include the DC plug. Uh, some of them you have to buy this separately. They include the DC plug. This will plug into your uh, DC port or what some people call a cigarette plug uh, in your vehicles and you can recharge it. Again, it has the uh, 8mm plug and it can be plugged into the same port right there. Then you can plug this into your vehicle. If you're charging from a vehicle, it's going to take longer and it's going to take up to about 14 hours. Now this is based on a completely empty unit recharging it to completely full, about 14 hours. Like I said, I don't recommend draining them all the way and then recharging them. Instead, you should recharge them when they're some, somewhere between 25 and 75 percent. Then you should recharge them when you get an opportunity to recharge them. And uh, that's easier on the battery and will make your battery last a lot longer. So you can recharge this using AC. You can recharge this from your vehicle using DC, or if you are like me that likes off-grid solar, uh, then you can also recharge this using solar. Now they send, they have the solar panels available. They do not come with this unit. However, they sent me two of these 100 watt panels. Now this is a a uh, separate uh, unit that you can get from there, made by Generac, and these are put this down here. These are 100 watt thin film. Uh, solar panels that come with this so that they can be folded and put together. They have a handle in them and you can see this. Try to put this up here. They have a, a pouch on the back side right here and they've got the cables for this inside this. Uh, here, find this up here. They have the cables inside here and it has its own. Uh, this is the uh, power controller right here. This is the power controller. You plug into this end of this cable right here, and then this power controller plugs into, and I will show this when I set it up outside. This power controller has an Anderson plug. That's what this plug here is called. That's called an Anderson plug, which is a uh, kind of a standard or universal plug now used for solar and other equipment that is using uh, DC power when you want to charge at a higher uh, voltage rate than uh, like just standard 12 volt or, or lower voltage rate. And it has it is made so that it can have two of the uh, panels plugged into the same uh, controller. And then you plug this into this unit up here, and it's got a red and a black on it. Make sure that I get them the right way. And you plug that in to that port right there. And then you can plug that into the connection from the solar panel, either one of those. Okay, and that will plug uh, charge up from the panel. Now they sent me two of these 100 watt panels. And I'm going to set this up with solar and see exactly how long it charges, show you how that looks. But I just wanted to show you the plugs. This is the power controller. These are the plugs, and this unit all comes together if you get the uh, solar panel separately. Now, the thing is to know is some of us already have solar panels, or maybe you already have solar panels on your camper or for your off-grid cabin or that you like to take. Make, maybe you've already bought one of these units. That's why these are nice because you can get these uh, Anderson plugs. You can get these Anderson plugs uh, on Amazon or just about any place that sells electronic supplies uh, so that if you uh, want to use your own solar panels, uh, you can get these. You can get an MC4 uh, cable that goes to an Anderson plug, and you can use your own panels. Now, you just want to make sure that you're staying under the recommended watt. Uh, recommended maximum is like uh, 200 watts, which is what they sent me. Uh, and it tells you in the instruction manual exactly how many volts and watts you want to use when you're charging from solar. But you can use your own panels and just get the uh, connection if you want to to charge this up from solar. And in, on solar, it says it will take about eight hours. Now, that depends on the weather conditions. If you've got really good sunlight, it'll take about seven to eight hours to recharge this unit up from solar power. If you've got cloudy days and you don't have a, a great sunshine, then, of course, it's going to take longer. But it's nice to know that you have three different ways of charging this. You can charge this up from AC from your wall. You can charge it up from DC from your vehicle. You can charge it up from solar panels uh, if you want to get the solar panels or if you already have solar panels at your house. So... Now, we just need to, to uh, plug some stuff in and uh, see what kind of appliances we can run off this, right? Okay, so we've tested this using uh, my uh, outdoor uh, tools, 
and it runs my power saw, my chainsaw, my weed eater. It will run pretty much any tools that I want to use and replace my uh, gasoline generator. That's a really good uh, feature that I am going to be using quite a bit around my off-grid cabin. But what about people that live in the cities uh, that, that want to know, well, will this back me up if I have a power outage? Will it take care of me for a couple days recharging my gadgets and running the appliances that I need to run? Well, it will run uh, some appliances that you are most likely to use. And I'll uh, tell you what the, the output says on here. It says it will run a, a car fridge, a 60 watt, uh, for about 66 hours, so almost three days of power for running a car fridge 60 watts. Now, I, I showed you that it will run my Alpacol, which is between 35 and 40 watts, so it should run that for at least three days, probably four days, uh, running that small fridge. Now, what I'm telling you that is, uh, if you want to use this for an emergency power system for a blackout, you may also want to invest in some of the uh, appliances that use less watts that are more efficient because you can run those a much longer time if you have a blackout, such as the Alpacool C20 fridge, okay, and a low watt uh, microwave and uh, DC appliances that don't use as much power as your AC appliances. You may want to invest in some of those so that if you have a blackout and you have this unit, you can run them even longer than you could your uh, regular household appliances. And you can use those appliances for camping and uh, you know for uh, a, you know, recreation that sort of thing tailgating that sort of thing they can still be used in off-grid uh, or blackout emergency if you need to have backup power so this will also run a drone uh, I've, I've used a drone a few times but uh, it says it will use a drone in 90 watt for about 20 recharges it will uh, power up a 12 inch laptop a 30 watt uh, which is about what how much power my laptop uses uh, for about 12.5 or 12 and a half recharges. It will run a 32 inch TV, a 60 watt 32 inch TV for about 14 hours. Uh, it will run a CPAP machine. Now a lot of people new, need CPAP machines in order to sleep or they may need an oxygen machine or something like that. It says it will run a CPAP machine for anywhere from 17 to 76 hours. I'm guessing that depends on how many watts that is needed in order to pump out the amount of oxygen that you're using on the machine. Uh, from the USB ports, now this uses less power because you're not using the 110 volt inverter. Uh, it will recharge a smartphone, uh, an 18 watt smartphone, about 100 recharges. And it will recharge a camera which is about 5 watts, about 180 recharges. Now some equipment that I recommend that you have uh, for emergency uh, especially in blackouts. One of them that I highly recommend is you have a rechargeable radio. And uh, this radio is made by uh, Foss, Foss Power. And uh, I got this from Amazon. And it does have its own solar panel and a light on it. Uh, but the, the solar panel is really small. So it would take forever to recharge this with that little bitty solar panel. However, you can recharge this just fine off the USB ports on this system right here, you just plug it in right there, uh, make sure I get it in the right slot, and uh, you can see the red light come on, and it's recharging now from this unit. This thing, you could probably recharge this 100 times off of this, okay? And this gives you AM, FM, and weather band. I highly recommend that you get an emergency radio that can be recharged, it has a lithium battery that can be recharged from a system like this. And this one has its own solar panel and light, which is pretty neat. Again, that's made by Foss Power. You can get that on Amazon. Uh, you can also recharge, like, your, your little uh, MP3 players, these things right here. You could probably recharge something like this, I don't know, 200 times, okay? And this also has a radio in it. It's, in, it's It has a great little radio in it. It also has some games in it, and it has the MP3 player. So these are really nice in a blackout, something like that, to keep your kids occupied and amused and also you can use it uh, for if you're uh, going hiking or biking or something like that and you can get the radio station so you can start kind of stay uh, uh, informed of what's going on with the weather. Other thing that I really recommend is these solar lights. These are made by Flyhoom and I've got several of these at my cabin and the, the cord actually unplugs from here. I just keep the cord plugged in for when I need to. Now this is rechargeable or it can run full time from the power. Again this is USB you just plug it in here to the USB port. You can see the red light comes on. 
And then this is actually a very bright light. It's a good light. So you can use these in an emergency. Uh, and they, because it's LED, you can recharge these, you know, 100 times and you're not going to run down your system. And you've got good light. And it can, it can also be used like a flashlight. You can unplug it. And one of the things I like about these is you could take these around. If you need to, you can use it like a flashlight. You can go outside to find if there's an emergency or something like that. Then you can plug it back in and recharge it. Really neat little, little lights made by Flyhoom. Again, you can get those on Amazon. And uh, you want to be able to communicate. In an emergency, that's the number one thing, is you need to be able to stay in communication with your family. And you also need to be able to be aware of what's going on uh, in the way of repairs that's going on for the grid. You need to know if the power, how long the power might be off. It might be off a long time. You may need to know if there's more hurricanes coming or more flooding coming or something like that. So this unit here will run a laptop, and I run my laptop and power it up. I've got my laptop right here, and I've tested it. It works fine off of this unit uh, and can be recharged you know, 25 times probably off this unit, or run. You don't have to just recharge it. You can run it steady off of the uh, USB ports. And this has two USB-C ports. And I really recommend that you get a USB-C uh, cord, and you can plug that in and then run that directly to your laptop. That recharges much faster than the USB. This is the USB 5-volt, uh, 2-amp, or uh, 2.4-amp plug. The USB-C plugs, which this has two of, it will recharge a lot faster from those USB-C plugs than it will from the standard USB-A uh, plugs, 5-volt uh, plugs. So use that uh, to recharge your things like your cell phone and your uh, laptop computer, where small gadgets like this, they can be charged directly from just the 5-volt, uh, 2.4-amp plug. It also has a uh, quick quick charger 3.0 uh plug on here that you can use that is higher amps and will charge appliances at a higher rate. All right, so those are emergency equipment and gadgets that I really recommend that you get along with it, something like the Alpacool C20 fridge and some uh, trucker or RV 12 volt appliances to go along with this unit. And you can get all those on Amazon. You can get the cords and whatever that you need for them. You probably got a lot of these gadgets. A lot of people collect them like I do over time. You end up with a lot of gadgets, stuff like that, uh, that you can use in a blackout or emergency situation that will use a lot less power than your standard appliances. In an emergency blackout, blackout you want to be able to, to maintain the, the power system as long as you can until the power comes back on. In Texas, when they had this last blackout, they there were people that didn't have any power for seven days. Okay, so if they have the basics, you know, if they can keep some food cold, if they can keep their medications cold, because a lot of people use medications that need to be kept cold, like insulin, if they can communicate with family in that. And another thing that this will run that I highly recommend, I don't have mine out right now because it's not winter, is a 12 volt uh, electric blanket. The type that you can get for vehicles, keep one of those around because you can plug that into this 12 volt port. It won't use very much power, and you can put one of those around you and your kids and your family, and it will heat you up instead of trying to heat the entire house up. It will heat you up and, and keep you warm in an emergency in winter. It will keep you warm all night long, and they work really well. I use one of those here at my cabin all the time. Uh, those 12 volt electric blankets that work excellent. You could run a 110 electric blanket off here too. And I don't know if there's all that much difference in wattage in one of those. I just know that the 12 volt electric blankets work really well. All right, folks, I think I've covered just about everything on this unit. I've ran every kind of tool that I would normally run uh, here at my cabin and they all run just fine off this. Now, how long you can run them will depend a lot on your use of the, the, uh, the tools and stuff. A lot of things like the tools and the microwave and that, those are only going to be run for a short amount of time and maybe just once a day. The, you know, I don't need a vacuum and a blackout, but I may want to run it once in a while. Uh, but I do need a fridge running full time and I do need lights uh, and I do need a radio and I do need my laptop for, for uh, information and communication, that sort of thing. Those sort of things, they can run full time off of this without using very much power. But other appliances like a microwave and the air conditioner, they don't have to run all the time. You can run them for an hour to cool a place down and then turn them off and be fine for three or four hours before you have to run them again for another hour to cool a place down. So consider that in, when you're deciding how to run your power to make it last as long as possible. All right, so what do I say about this unit? 
I think it's well made. Everything I see about it tells me it's well constructed. It does what they claim it will do in the uh, information in their advertising. It has uh, a lot of features that I really like. So one of the features I didn't mention on here is the warranty. This has a uh, five-year limited warranty. I compared that to some other models that are of a similar price, similar make, and those only have a two-year limited warranty. So you're getting an additional three-year limited warranty uh, with this Generarc model. Uh, I also think that, you know, for, for the uh, suitability, it works very well. It has the amount of power that you would need for at least two to three days of uh, power outage, possibly longer. Uh, and it will handle all of the large loads, power tools. It is also uh, can be used as a backup source for uh, power tools and things like that for us off-gridders that may work off-grid, uh, that may work remotely. It would work really well for like a camping situation for a, a weekend or a three or four day week uh, trip for camping, for running all of your equipment and stuff like that. So I give it five stars. Now, I'm going to keep putting this to the test over the next few months, like I always do. And in about three months, I'll probably give it another uh, review after I've used it for three months to see if my opinion has changed. But I think for what I see and, and how it will work, I give it five stars for now. All right, folks. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video. And always come by Simple Solar Homesteading Solar Cabin channel on YouTube. Have a great day.